falling in love with a watch is not as bizarre as you think, especially if it homages IWC Mark 20. Let's take a look at this beauty. Classic Pilot Watch aesthetics with an arguably better proportioned watch than the original it homages. Stainless steel bracelet and case, flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating for superb legibility. Seiko's NH35 self-winding automatic movement, premium C3 loom, 200 meters of water resistance, screw down case back and screw in crown. I've paid just 51 bucks for this watch. This is a good price considering even pre the November sale I'm finding this watch for around the 60 to 70 dollar mark with a stainless steel bracelet. So I've actually left a link to the listing I got this watch from in the description below the video so make sure to check it out. This watch has a lot of great surprises. All of it I love it I really do. Now a few peeves yeah they do come along the way and I will tell you about them in this review but I'll give it away I do like this watch tremendously it's an unexpected surprise at this price point what's not unexpected though is that it is from Addis Dive because if you have noticed that the Addis Dive quality attention to detail has improved dramatically over the last few years anyways without further ado let's get into the review of the Addis Dive. To the dimensions. The diameter is 39 millimeters. Lug to lug measurement 48.8 millimeters. The lug to lug width is 19 millimeters and tapers down to the clasp to get to 17.2 millimeters. The height is just 11.9 millimeters. The weight was originally 140 grams. But in order to fit my 6.5 inch wrist, I've had to remove 4 links and now the weight comes to 128 grams. The sub 40mm diameter makes this an easy choice for everyday wearing. The stainless steel case gets even and fine brushing style across the case surface area. The brushing strokes are consistent and diligent. The chamfers are well smoothed in the transition from the case walls to the lugs. The fixed bezel is raised and angled inwards surrounding the flat sapphire crystal. The bezel gets radial brushing to visually separate it from the case base. The case is strict and the layers are crisp and well defined. The modest lug to lug length is complemented with downward sloping lugs as well. On the right we have a signed and screwed crown. It's larger than average and it's not guarded. Simple, utilitarian and again quite strict. The tip of the crown has a satin brush look with a fine engraving of the Addis Dive logo and that just looks so neat. On the underside we have a slab of stainless steel representing a screw down case back warranting 200 meters of water resistance. A side note is that the original IWC which this watch actually homages only gets 100 meters water resistance so technically Addis Dive does it slightly better. The bracelet is another strong point with this timepiece, except for some minor points, but we'll mention them as we go along. Firstly to the good ones, the lateral brushing on the outer and inner sides is fine and refined, much in line with the watch case brush design. The sides are polished to get some more light play off the bracelet. The links are constructed from five individual components. This creates a braided look. The tolerances are quite tight yet the bracelet drapes around the wrist very naturally. The inverted end links look fluid and nicely hug my 6.5 inch wrist. The overall look is solid, yet the individual links create a fluid look and feel. Unfortunately, we get an unsigned clasp, but with a safety latch and three micro adjustments. As we go down from the lugs to the clasp, there is a slight taper to the bracelet, ever so slight, down from 19 millimeters to just over 17. Now the clasp here is just not as good as the rest of the package. You get a very simple clasp, so it's unsigned. Well, you do get a safety latch, you do get three micro adjustments, but it's just so plain and simple. It's just not as special as the rest of the watch. 
Another peeve here is that the links are actually held together by push pins. So again, that's okay for the price point, but it's just this watch, it just feels and looks so special and it just seems so simple. But then again, if this watch did cost over a hundred bucks, I think, yeah, screws would have been better fitted. But for 51 bucks, I'm not complaining. As you glance at the watch of the face, you're met with a black matte dial. There are no applied elements. The indexes, 12 numerals and minute chaptering are all printed. These have a greenish yellow tinge to them for clear contrast during light hours. In the dark, the C3 loom shines bright on the hour batons and the sword style minute and hour hands. We get C3 loom here, which is 5 to 10% brighter than BGW9 loom. The longevity is also good, shooting well above the average in the sub $100 segment. At the 3 o'clock position, we get a date window with a white date dial. At first sight, it may look out of place, yet the completely white seconds pointer complements the white dial. The logo is under the 12 o'clock, automatic and 200 meters are printed above the 6 o'clock position. The dial is all about classic simplicity, good contrast and clear legibility. And now let's talk about the crystal. So we actually do get sapphire glass here and it's flat. What you will notice is that it's just a hairline above the fixed bezel. Now again, we know that we have a black matte dial here and considering the crystal is flat so we shouldn't be getting too many reflections but the reho is very finely brushed it's not mirror like and it's not glossy it's just very finely brushed and that still creates a bit of light play at different angles when you look at the watch and that is quite interesting again it's not blinging Everything about this watch is slightly subdued, but in a very classy, elegant and quite a premium way. In regards to the movement, we get the Japanese NH35. Well, it's actually Seiko's NH35 self-winding automatic movement. So it gets 21,600 beats per hour. The mechanism is hackable, meaning that when you pull out the crown, the seconds hand stops. There are 24 joules and you get 41 hours of power reserve. Another interesting feature with the Seiko's NH movements is that they get the magic lever. And what that feature does is let's say your watch stops. You can just shake it side to side and the watch will start moving. So that is pretty cool. Anyways, now that we've talked about the watch, I think I've covered most points, I can tell you this is the watch that I've been wearing for, for the last two days because I do that with most of the watches that I bring to the channel, but I don't want to take this watch off. And just a reminder that I will be leaving a link to the listing I got this watch on in the description below the video because 51 bucks is a very sharp price. The thing about this watch, it's special, but it's not the blingy special, it's a special where you just wear it and you get so comfortable you forget that you're wearing it. But when you actually do look down at the time, you go, ah, oh, yes, what a beauty. And that's that nice, classy, the real timepiece that I think people yearn for when they're looking for a watch. Something that is useful, that has function, you get very clear time telling here. You get a date window. It's automatic. It's a real 200 meters water resistance here. The loom is amazing. Looking at that loom is just such a pleasure. It's bright. The longevity is really good. There is so many things that you like about this that you sort of forget about the peeves, like the push pins. Well, the clasp, which is a bit, yeah, you know, a bit boring. But apart from that, everything else is just fine. And the price point. Because in the sub $100 segment, there's not that much really outstanding watches. There are plenty of good watches, don't get me wrong. And I like to think that I'm reviewing quite a few of them. But this one stands out for its distinct crisp looks and the feel of the watch. But anyways, just because I love this watch so much, I shouldn't talk and talk about it. Anyway, so I will stop. 
Thank you for watching the review. If you have enjoyed it, please drop me a like. If you want to see more of the same, you know what to do. Please hit the red subscribe button below the video. And I'll see you in the next one.